beings. The speed of light in a vacuum, that is, with no interference, is universally accepted as 186,282 miles per second, or 299,792.458 kilometers per second. Other things only slow it somewhat. Nothing else is known to go faster than light. In fact, it's considered physically impossible. We also know that matter stretches extremely far throughout the universe. The distance of the known universe of physical matter is said to be 46.5 billion light years in every direction. A light year is the distance light can travel in a year. So logically, light from the most distant known regions would take 46.5 billion years to get here. Furthermore, cosmologists suggest that the physical universe's actual size is at least a thousand times bigger than our observable universe. Now, I won't argue over the age of the Earth. It's not important to me since I don't believe that Earth is the center of the universe, nor do I believe that Earth is the only inhabited planet. So believe what you want there. But given known facts, common sense should tell us that at least part of the universe exceeds 46.5 billion years old. And if astronomical instruments advance to detect far more distant light sources, this would show that the universe is far older still, perhaps trillions or quadrillions. Yet materialistic evolutionists deny that, claiming the universe is only 13.8 billion years old at its oldest point. That's based on calculations of when the supposed Big Bang occurred. In order to avoid looking stupid, since this obviously contradicts light year ca calculations, they conjured up the idea that the empty space itself quickly expanded like a blown up balloon. They say that empty space is actually quantum foam. But there's no evidence for quantum foam. All evidence shows that empty space is nothingness and therefore could never expand. Besides, other aspects of the Big Bang Theory are also very illogical. Then there are young Earth creationists who won't accept a vastly old universe since it contradicts the timeline of a literal interpretation of Bible texts or other religious texts and their idea of an Earth-centered universe. Some suggested that when God created the distant stars, he created light trails connecting them to Earth, each other, and so on. Besides being unscientific, the argument seems to lay God open to a legitimate charge of deception. Young Earth creationist and astronomer Barry Setterfield saw the problems with this and so proposed his own idea. He noted that the Bible repeatedly says that God stretched out the heavens, and knowing that the expansion of galaxies alone would be insufficient to allow for a young universe, he embraced the expansion of empty space idea invented by evolutionists. Yet he proposed that the expansion happened much faster to try to give his beliefs credibility. Knowing that scientific theories were still insufficient to bolster his beliefs, he proposed that the speed of light was much faster in the past. Mr. Setterfield knew that numerous published determinations of light speed were made through the years, so he examined the data and concluded that light speed had slowed any predictable decay curve pattern. He extrapolated this supposed decay curve into a point approaching infinite light speed and thus the universe's ultimate origin less than 10,000 years ago. However, the first published measurement of light speed was made in 1675 by Ole Romer at 220,000 kilometers per second. That's some, somewhat slower than light speed today. It was calculated the second time in 1728 by James Bradley. It was higher at 301,000 kilometers per second. In 1862, Hippolyte Physio said it was higher still at 315,000 kilometers per second. Yet a simple explanation for, for calculation discrepancies is that scientific equipment was substandard and men lacked the knowledge of physics available today. From 1947 on, the speed of light was calculated the way it is now. Another construct people use is Einstein's theory of general relativity, which postulates that time speeds up relative to gravitational fields. People from each contradictory viewpoint abuse this idea to posit that time 
sped up in accordance with their own model of the universe. Yet it's evident that time doesn't actually exist. Please see my videos on time. That is, time is simply a way to measure the passage of events as a kilometer doesn't actually exist as a natural phenomenon, only as a measurement. Besides, we know Einstein was dead wrong by completely rejecting quantum physics, which has since been abundantly proven. And most people of all persuasions are anthropocentric, that is, human-centered. A writer of the Quran even had the audacity to say that angels worship man. Yet even if we're the only planet with intelligent life, highly unlikely, humans haven't existed very long. With the oldest commonly accepted time for human existence, 2.2 million years, and the strong possibility that parts of the universe are over a quadrillion years old, the universe did without humans for a mighty long time. Humans are not even the dominant species on Earth. If we had a giant scale to weigh everything, we could see that insects weigh over a hundred times more than all humans. All insects versus all humans. And most of the habitat for earthly life, the ocean depths, are basically off limits to humans. Besides, there is a likelihood that the stars themselves are living beings who possess free will to an extent. This ancient idea is called panpsychism, formerly called animism. I explained panpsychism in another video. I'm thankful for the repudiation of anthropocentrism since humans have let me down throughout my life. There's a saying, I look both ways before crossing a one-way street. That's how much faith I have left in humanity. So repent of your anthropocentrism and think of the ancient, colossal, and mega-powerful stars who perpetually send out never-ending light beams. Our puniness is flabbergasting. The point is not to to not care about others who are special despite their limitations. The point is to have humility and think past the stars to the one who enlightened us by creating our vast universe and all that is therein.